Hey guys, welcome to the third edition of Salsa Talk and today we're going to talk about musicality. Now what is musicality? Musicality means the interpretation of salsa music. And of course there is much more to it than just that, but we're going to go through it and at Salsa Ventura we have built it up in five different steps or in five different building blocks. And the first building block, let me see if I can write it down for you on my whiteboard is what we call uh, foundation number one. So let's say we have five foundations and step number one is what we call rhythm and timing. Okay, I hope you can read it. Let me see, rhythm. I'm connected with my, uh, with my microphone, so I have to be a little bit careful. So rhythm and timing, okay? So that is step number one. Now, when you look at rhythm and timing, there are many ways to make the interpretation of music and you can dance on one and two and three and four but in general most people like to dance on one and a large part of the salsa dancers also like to dance on two now we don't go into the difference between one and two but what is the most important is that you know how to find the beat and the most easy one is because we teach here in holland we teach that people to dance on one first and once they want more they can also always choose to go and dance on two but we always start with one now the first uh, strategy that we use for the first foundation uh, is when we teach people how to find the one we many times use the conga okay the conga that's one of the beautiful instruments in salsa dancing the conga and I hope you can hear it because I don't have huge speakers over here, but I'm going to do my best to let you hear. Uh, this is from our Salsa Ventura CD, and I'm going to make you try to hear the conga two, three, beat. Four, one. I hope you can hear this. Now, if you hear this, dun dun, dun dun, dun dun. Dun dun. One, two, one, and then more and more instruments are being added. I hope you can hear it, otherwise uh, I'm going to find another way to, to make you hear that tone. But basically what the conga is doing is this. One, two, three. So let's say you have the counts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the conga plays a double tone, the conguero, the guy or the girl who's playing the congas, they play a double tone, gung gung, and they do that exactly on four and. So this is on the four and on the end, which is just between the four and the five. So that's like half a beat. Then the other gung gung, the other double is played on eight and. So just after the double tone, eight and, you have a new one or four and and then you have the five now if in the first stage we are not going to make a difference between the one and the five then the only thing you have to do in the beginning is try to recognize the double tone in the conga so when you hear the conga gung gung pak gung gung pak and you know how to hear the gung gung all you need to do is this guys Connect a third beat and the third one is the one or the five. So you can go gung gung gung. And then if it would be three, instead of just two, you have found the one. Okay? Gung gung one. Gung gung five. Gung gung one. Gung gung five. Okay? So that's one of the many ways to teach people how to dance in time with the music. The second one is what I call the story. Okay? The story. The, the story of the song. And you can compare a song also like a book. When the writer starts writing his book, he doesn't start with chapter number one. He always starts with the introduction. And then the writer thanks his family or his kids or his loved ones. He goes like, you know, uh, I thank so many people for writing this book. And the same goes for the song. So let me see if I can make you hear a song. And I hope you can hear it well. Let me see. For example, the song Conciencia from Gilberto Santa Rosa. Listen to this. Uh, let me see if I can make this work. I have my laptop over here. So this part, so when you hear the story, this part is actually the introduction of the song. Okay, so this is how the song is built up. 
and each and every part can be yeah listened to as sentences so for example that could be a comma comma And like this, it goes on and on. And then, if you listen to another song, let me see, with some breaks, for example. Um, let me see, what is a nice song to make you hear this? Yes, for example, this song is called Mujer Celosa, which means jealous uh, woman, jealous wife. And this song has breaks, listen. So these are the commas, and then you will notice, so let's say you have all the commas, and suddenly, suddenly there is a huge dot, and actually it almost sounds as a new chapter. This is also one of the many ways to find out where the one is, because now something interesting happens. After every comma, there is a five or a one. And after every dot, there is also a one. So whenever the song has stopped and there was a break, the song kind of starts again. So there, just behind the dot, or just behind a huge gap or a break within the music, you can find a new one. So if you become able to listen to those commas, those dots, alineas, chapters, you have enlarged enormously the chance that you can find the one, okay? So that's the third way, no sorry, the second way in how we explain people how to find the one in the music. And then there is a third one, and this is what I personally call waltz. And I don't know if you know this, but I, you know, I come from Holland and here in this country you go boom, 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 boom. And a long time ago I was watching those people dancing on Dutch music and I thought, hmm, if this is how Dutch people move, or in general, I mean, if you look at Germans, they also have the same kind of waltz kind of music. I thought, how can I make a translation from waltz to Latin music salsa, to salsa or let's say Latin jazz for that matter. And then I found something very interesting because at that time, this is many years ago, my kids were just born and when my daughter started to walk, she was always bouncing. She didn't just start stepping salsa steps, of course, and she was only two years old. But whenever I played a salsa song, something interesting happened. And for example, if I take um, just a song, let's see, for example, La Conciencia, and my daughter would move, it would go like this. And when I started watching kids moving on the music, they always went like this. Now, when do they do that? They always do that on the one and the three. So on the first beat and the third, or on the fifth and the seventh, they were kind of bouncing through their knees or maybe even jumping. So then I thought, how can I use this? Uh, because it's fascinating for those people that are dancing on two and that are very fanatic on two. I know that some people that dance on two, and I will make another video about it, they say, yeah, we are dancing in time with the music, and people that are dancing on one or on five are dancing more on the melody. It might be, it doesn't matter to me, but the one, three, five, seven is a very natural way of moving to the music. I have never seen a kid of two years old that would just start going like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six. They don't do that on two, four, six, and eight. Maybe in Puerto Rico, I don't know, or in New York, but I don't think so. It's always on one, on three, and five, and seven. So then I started thinking, so how can I use it to make the translation to salsa? And what I did was this. I thought, okay, if people move like this on one, three, five, seven, maybe it's better to start stepping and moving the body because this is what we do in the West. We move our bodies. So you go one, two, three, five, six, seven, one, two, three, five, six, seven. I thought, okay. So when I do that on one, three, five, seven, you will see this one, three, five, seven, or one, two, three, five, six, seven, one, two, three, five, six, seven. So and I thought, you know what? We're gonna do this on one, three, five, seven. So we went one, three, five, seven. And we were moving like this. Now my chair is making some noise, so I'm gonna sit still. 
But as you understand, what happened was this. People were moving like this and I thought, okay. So what I did then, this was the first stage. Okay, guys, let's go up and down. One, two, three. Stage number two, let's move from the left to the right on one, three, five, seven, one, three, five, seven. And then I said, okay, now you are going to continue your steps one, three, because they were not only moving, I also asked them to step. And we still do this in our teacher's training and people are just flabbergasted. They go like, how can this be so easy? So now instead of just moving the body, we also make them step. One, three, five, seven. And while doing that, they move the body. And then I start counting till eight. And I go, okay, so here you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And as you can see, if these are my feet, then my feet are stepping on one, three, and five, seven, but my voice is counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So while my, while my voice is doing all eight, my steps are only doing one, three, five, seven. And then I tell them something extra and I tell them, okay, so now you're moving one, three, five, seven, but I'm counting one, two, three, five, six, seven. So then I leave the four and the eight away and I go one, two, three, five, six, seven, one, two, three, five, six, seven, one, two, three, five, six, seven. And then I tell them, all you now need to do is make one little extra step between one and three and one little extra step between three and five. And then something incredible happens. People go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, seven. And they're stepping in place. And actually now they're dancing salsa. Because that's the basic neutral step in place. I hope you like uh, this way of, um, of understanding the rhythm and timing. But this is how we explain it as much as we can okay so back to the rhythm and timing we have congas we use the story and we use what we call the walls one three five seven then the second foundation step the second one so we have rhythm and timing on one the second is what we call skips now i don't know if you know what a skip is but when we talk about the music skips we actually mean that the music is playing two times one two three four Okay, so if you look at this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that's typically a way for dancers to count, but most musicians, they only count till four. So when you talk to a musician, the musician will always tell you, no, we play salsa in four counts in one measure. But when they skip, for the musician, it doesn't matter that much because it just, yes, yeah, some, some musicians told me, yeah, it's to make it more excitement, uh, the dance and also the music when they play it. Uh, because what basically happens is this, and I will let you hear. If you listen to a song, many times you will hear a break, a stop, that I just explained to you, like a big dot or like a whole chapter, and then the music starts again. But if you would not change your dancing, you would now be dancing on five instead of dancing on one, what you were doing before. Listen to this. Again, this is a song. Let me see. No, this is not Mujer Celosa. Mujer Celosa from uh, El Gran Combo de Puerto Rico. So I'm going to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 One. So what happened? I kept counting and suddenly after the music stopped and it started again because I did not stop my counting, I am now suddenly dancing on five. Hmm, let's listen to this again. So the song is doing this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and suddenly you hear a break, boom, and then the music starts again. Now if I would not stop, I would now be on five instead of on one. Listen to it again. We call this skips. So I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, but that's where I just started. 
So the so what the music did is one, two, three, four, uh, and then again a one. Now we call this skips. Now what do we do when we are dancing with a partner is you're holding her in your arms. What I usually do, I once I am totally sure that the music has skipped, that actually happens exactly on the moment that I'm about to step back. I hope you understand that. The moment that I am about to make a back step, that's exactly the moment that the music kind of starts again. So what I do, I wait, I have a lady in my arms, I'm stepping back, and now instead of hearing a new five, I now hear the one. So the music says again, boom. I am finishing my back step, and now I start stepping back again. That is much more friendly towards the lady than stepping forward twice. So you can do one, two, three, four, finishing your forward basic step as a leader, and then when you hear a new one, which is going to be here, step forward again. But that's very dominating. So most ladies might be in a shock. So what we do, one, two, three, four, you're stepping back. Actually, on this new one, you hear the one, one, you finish your step, one, two, three, which is going to be here. And then what you're going to do, <clears throat> because the music just started again, you're going to step back one more time. So after you make two back steps and you go forward again, you are back on the one. Try it, I'm gonna make a video soon about it, but just for this strategies of musicality, I want you to take this into account. Then we're gonna to go to the third one, let me see. Now we go to the structure of the song, and this is gonna blow your mind, guys. If you haven't seen this before, you're gonna love this. This is what we call the structure. The structure within the music. And maybe you don't know, but most of the songs, as I just explained about the book, start with the introduction of the song. There is an intro. This is not the beginning of the song yet, okay? I think it's a very nice uh, song. We call it La Conciencia. Listen, this is typically the introduction of the song. It's not the beginning yet. So when you're dancing to a song like this, it doesn't make sense to start Turning the lady around, take it easy, make a crossbody lead, maybe a little turn, maybe an around the world or a 360, but keep it easy. Don't start doing all kinds of crazy stuff. After the introduction, for me this is still the introduction, then the song begins. Listen. Pam. This is when the song starts. Now you might say, no, for me it's still the introduction. That's also fine. For me, it's the beginning. So here I go, beginning. And what then happens, there is also the melody that's connected to the beginning. So then you start finding out the melody of the song, which is actually the storyline of the song. And that goes on and on and on. So this is stage number one. This is stage number two. And then something incredible happens. We call this stage number three. In most songs, not in every song, but in most songs, you will find out that we have something that we call Montuno. Now, Montuno, I don't know if you speak any Spanish, but in Spanish, this comes from the Spanish word montar. Y si uno está montando un caballo, when somebody is going to get on a horse and he's going to ride, then this is what actually happens to the song. Because what happens is that the guy that is playing the small little drums, the bongos, he puts them down and now he takes the campana, the cowbell, and he starts hitting the bell. And actually it is this part of the song where the song goes to its second stage, to its, um, to its next level. And when the musicians are playing and the guy is taking the campana and he starts to play, then this is now that they actually are hoping for, that you as a dancer go, wow, this is the moment, now we go loose. And you start doing some shines or you do your crazy turn patterns, but that's only here, guys. That's so after one, two thirds of the song, only then you start doing the montuno, okay? Let me see if you can still see it because I can see that um, my camera is a bit out of, uh, out of line. So we call this the Montuno. Now, how does it sound? Let me see, I had a beautiful song. Let me see, I think this is a nice song. Also Grand Combo. This is called Asi Son, listen. So maybe you don't, you, you don't, you don't hear it yet, but if you listen carefully, a bell is added to the song, listen. 
There's no bell yet. You hear the trumpets. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. So now you can actually hear the change of the sound and now it, it's going to its second level of the song. And this is where you can do more of your turn patterns and your shines, etc. And then the fourth stage, guys, you work, you work towards the end. And I always tell people this, how do you know the end is coming? Well, the song has been playing for a while by now. And then I always say this, when everything went wrong, you still have the ending to make a very happy ending, uh, so to speak. Okay, so when you can hit a final break and you can have the lady in your arms and go down or do whatever, what is nice, then this will complete the song. Okay, so this is the third stage. Then we have, let me see, on number four. Yes, I don't know if it's going to fit, so let me see if I can turn around, okay? Yeah, let me use this. Okay, there was already something written, so I'm gonna try to hide it a bit for you, like this, okay? Then now, uh, on number four, on number four. So we have, this is nice, on number four, we have the secret number four. Now, why do we call it a secret number? I don't know if you have noticed, but this is kind of homework. Whenever you listen to salsa music, most of the parts, most of the um, parts within the music are repeated four times. And let me see. Yeah, we're using the same song, so that's nice. So let's see if I can make you hear it. So why do you want to know that everything is divided in four? Because when you want to start hitting a break, which is level number five, when you want to hit a break, it's nice that you know what is going on when. And when you are dancing and you know that every single part is repeated four times, then it actually makes the chance of you hitting the break bigger by knowing that a fourth part of your music is coming. I'm not gonna let you hear a song with a break, but just to make you aware of that every song is played in parts of four. Now, sometimes it's two times four, sometimes it's four times four, but I hope you can hear it that after four parts, Many times the music has a little twist. It, the sound will change. Listen to this. So, how do we count this? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Listen. Ba -da -da -da, you hear the sound change. Two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four, and it changes. Ah, he starts singing. Two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four, two, three, and now he repeats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow, and another change. Now that is fascinating. Because what happens a lot is when we go to chapter number five. So I call this strategy number four. It's called the secret number four. Once you know how to recognize the four parts within the music, the chances of you knowing what is about to come, knowing that it is going to change, knowing that maybe a beat is coming, it will enlarge your chances of hitting the break. Okay, guys, and then we go to part number five. And part number five, so this is called the secret number four. Secret number four. And this is hitting the breaks. Now, hitting the breaks is actually that part that every dancer loves. And I always tell people this. When you have been trying to catch a break and you have been trying over and over again and it didn't work, but after 100 times you finally hit a break, you are dancing with your partner and you hear this break coming and you go BAM exactly on the music, or you go with your shoulders BAM BAM, or you go with your head BAM, then you feel like wow, I always tell my students, guys, when that happens, go on your knees and thank God. Because after one time, you know it is possible. After hitting a break one time, you know now you can do it more. But until you hit it one time, you actually don't know if you can hit it. So it's all a matter of trying till you get it. 
Now, when you catch a break, I always say this. There are two ways in finding out the breaks. And this is very nice for you to know. And as I just said, we have a secret number four. Many, many, many times. First of all, number one, as a strategy, I will write it down in the red color. As a strategy, number one, we call this KISS. And KISS means keep it simple. So don't start doing all kinds of difficult turns when the break is coming or when the break might be coming because your lady is going to get very frustrated. Okay, so ladies, if you recognize this, and please place your comment below because many times I see you struggling in a very difficult turn with your arms like this and then the break is coming and you're trying to kind of hit it like this, okay? So number one, guys, keep it simple. The best thing is do crossbody leads, crossbody leads, and something simple. Number two, after the repetition of four parts, something is about to happen. So when you are dancing and you hear a break, bam, right here at number four, or even a little bit after, then since you now know that those parts are being repeated in the song, there is a very big chance of that break coming back again. So you now get new options. So maybe if you keep trying, maybe you can hit it there. Now there are two ways. One way is three beats, three measures are being finished and then the break will be here in number four. The other option is the measure is totally finished and then the break comes here. There are two options, okay? Many, many, many times they will finish the parts of four and then hit the break, but sometimes they use the entire fourth part to hit the break. Now, without even counting, you can actually hear when a break is coming. And I'm gonna, let me see, I'm gonna play a song again, guys, I hope you can hear this. So you hear the trumpets. This song is, by the way, called La Esencia del Guajango from Johnny Pacheco. Beautiful song. Pa, pa, that's a break. Trumpets coming. So now I know that after this sound, he sings something, the trumpets are coming, boom, and the break is coming. So let's say I missed the first one. Now let's see. Now he starts singing again. Escucha usted. That means all of you listen. The, es the essence of the guajongo. Exactly the same breaks. And this happens over and over again within the song. So when you are dancing on a song like this, where, where all those parts are being repeated all the time, then it's going to be even very hard not to catch a break. Okay, guys? So let's wrap it all up. The five strategies of musicality, guys. First, rhythm and timing. How are you going to find the one or even the two in the song for that matter? And we have the conga, we have the storyline, and we have the walls. The one, three, five, seven. On number two, skips in the music, where the band is playing two times, one, two, three, four. How do you deal with it? You step two times behind, and then you go forward again, and you're back in timing with the music. On number three, the structure of the music. Know where the music has an introduction. Please keep calm. Wait till the music is in the melody line to make it a little bit more exciting and then go to the third stage where the Montuna starts, when you hear the bells. In many songs you will hear the bells and that is when you can start throwing all your turn patterns and do some shines if you want and then you go to the ending. Then guys, on number four, we have the secret number four, okay? The secret number four is that every single song is divided in parts of four and that makes it able for you to also know where you are within the song and then on number five, guys, Hitting the breaks. How to do that? Keep it very simple. You either can hit a break within the, the fourth measure, let's say, or you do it right after. I hope you like it, guys. I have a beautiful PDF waiting for you. Below, I am placing the link for the PDF. So you have this entire thing. I'm actually reading this from my PDF on my other screen. So if you want to download, just fill in your, um, your email address and it's going to be sent straight to you. Then... I hope you like it, and um, guys, give some thumbs up. Please tell the whole world about uh, the Salsa Talks, because I think uh, a lot of people like it. We have a lot of compliments. Well, we, well, I also get a lot of compliments. I'm going to get more people in, 
and whatever you want me to talk about um, I'm more than happy to be of your service so just let me know what you want to know more about or if you want some interviews just let me know and uh, I'm gonna arrange it for you okay thank you so much have a great week and have fun on the dance floor bye